Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Greg Andrews from Search Minerals and let me start by saying congratulations Greg, you did it. The PEA results are out, congratulations. Thank you Tracy. So how about we start there? Did I read this right? An NPV pre-tax of $2.23 billion. Why don't you start there and give us some highlights? Yeah, we're very proud of the PA. We've worked hard to do this. It's been in the makings. Our last PA was in 20, 2016. And really what this PA is, is capsulating is the high value of the project and, and putting in production both the Deep Fox and Foxtrot. It has an extremely high internal rate of return of over 40%. The real key thing is also uh, the in initial capital cost is $422 million, which we believe is financeable, but it also has a quick payout of 1.8 years after tax, which is very key for what bankers or investors or strategic partners are looking for is a reasonable internal uh, capital cost with a quick payout. So we're very proud with those first parameters. I've been in this industry for over 15 years, Greg, and I've never heard initial capital costs being so low. Can you tell me how you managed to keep that at 422 million? I'm, I'm used to hearing numbers like 850, that was cheap actually a few years back, but 1.2 billion, why are your capital costs where they're located? Has it been the development of the technology or how, how have you managed to do this? Yeah, it's really driven. It's always been driven with our technology. When we started in this business, we always wanted to be have a, a, um, a project that was scalable because we you, capital cost is always very key in a commodities-based business. So with our technology, what we've done is we've been able to reduce the size with the, the equipment and the size and the reagents. And really what this PA talks about is being able to, the change in, in what's reduced it or helped with this, is being able to set up a grinding and magnetic circuit in Labrador at the mine site to produce a concentrate in Labrador that can be shipped to the Ireland and Newfoundland on a brownfield site that would do the direct extraction, which has the chemical processing. And that was very key because that reduces the uh, concentrate going through our extensive chemical processing, less material, smaller equipment, smaller reagents. And that's what's really contributing to making this project financeable and low capital cost. I think that this news release really plays to your strengths. I mean, you've got a 61 million contingency fee. The payback is, is payback turnaround time is is almost shocking. Can you you can do this in less than two years? Um, well, we expect in, yeah, to be in production in 2025. We, our work ahead of us is our next step from this PA is really the launching pad to get in front of, to do our project, get it registered with the, the government for the environmental. We'll start our permitting. We've already, we, we constantly been engaging with our indigenous group, the NCC, the Nunatukvik Community Council since 2012. So it, we're talking with the communities to really advance this project, this is a project that is really needed in Southeast Labrador to bring the jobs uh, to that area. And of course, Greg, we've been in this industry long enough to see all the different ways that rare earths have been referred to, but you, these are magnetic materials you're talking about producing the neodymium, presidium, dysprosium, and terbium, is that correct? Yeah, and, and what you'll find with rare earth companies now is we, we call them the magnet rare earth elements because those four elements that you just listed represent typically over 90% of the revenue of your project by having having the basket of all four, which we do. So when we look at this PEA, then that gross revenue number, it is driven over 90% is driven by those four elements because it's the permanent magnet industry that is that is is really the upward trending. The analyst reports and research analysts, they talk about a $15 billion uh, industry in the permanent magnets going to over 60 billion by 2035, you know, from here four times in, you know, 15 years. And right now there's not the mines in production to meet those goals and search, search with RPA just on these deposits um, is going to produce about 1400 tons in a market that's really crying for over 68,000 tons. So we need many, many search mines. Well, let me ask you something. Are you thinking about changing your name since you're no longer just searching? We get <laughs> asked that to all me the like time. You, like you found your materials. Doesn't sound to me like you're, but you're doing, you're still doing some searching and exploration. Is that correct? 
Absolutely. I mean, this, this PA is just on our two deposits that are most advanced. Along our 63 kilometer district, we have another property called Fox Meadow that we expect to drill again in, in the fall after our program that we're doing in Deep Fox right now. And uh, that is a highly prospective uh, target that we've been doing channel work on it. And in, in, in terms of Dr. Randy Miller's channel sample, our deposits on surface, we do a channel sample and we need to drill what's underneath. So that's our model and we stick to it and it's been very effective. So I think I'm really delighted that you mentioned Dr. Randy Miller's name because you've had a number of prominent members of the rare earth community and for all of you out there watching the rare earth radar or the magnetic rare earths or whatever we're calling them this week. Um, can you also just mention to me, we were discussing earlier that while you're doing exploration, and while you now are ready to set up the financing for production, you also have a technology component with search minerals as well. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, Tracy, Dr. David Dreisinger, head of uh, UBC Metallurgy, has been with us. Both him and Dave, uh, Randy Miller have been with us since day one. And the key thing there is Dave's developed the technology that has, that has been supported both with the federal government, with ACOA, and the provincial government with Innovate, and they've contributed close to $3 million for us. They invested in us when the markets weren't really paying attention in from 2015 to 2019, and it's allowed us to now be at the point where we could do a high-scale demonstration or higher, higher volume demonstration plant to, uh, to deliver more product. So Tracy, what we did uh, this year and last year, we, we, we created a 70 ton bulk sample that we've run through our technology with the grinding and the magnetic work. So we have 20 tons of material ready to go through our direct extraction, which we are applying for the funding that's been announced in the recent government incentive programs to create a critical minerals plan in Canada. And Search Minerals is, wants to be part of that. And of course, with all of the strong geopolitical influencers that are currently happening, um, anyone out there watching critical minerals in general, uh, rare earths in particular, um, uh, you could see a bolst and interest in your stock at any given time. Uh, we've certainly seen that historically over the last couple of decades. So Greg, thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations on your PEA results. Thank you, Tracy.